Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time, as you can see, we're going to be dealing with a subject that probably not every one of us may want to deal with, but we kind of have to at some point in time, and that's backing up your virtual machine. Well, you've probably already figured out by now that, well, you're not going to be able to hook up a tape drive to it. And if you could, the performance would probably really be less than stellar. So there's two things we're going to look at. We're going to look at cloning the virtual machine you've got. And there's pluses and minuses to that. And then doing a snapshot backup. If you're not familiar with the term, think of it like in the days when you would be doing a tape backup. And that is where you're taking a picture of it at that point in time but the snapshot backup as a general rule is going to be only taking an, an image of what has occurred since the image was created so it's taking kind of a snapshot now sometimes it may grab more than that it just all depends on what it senses is going on so let's go ahead and look at the first one and we'll and we'll talk about each one to see what is going to work best for you and there's no one right or wrong way so as you can see the in with the machine this is in a powered off state now there's two ways you can do either a clone or a snapshot and either way i would say do it with the power off and here's why depending on what you're running in the virtual machine it may not get a clean backup and a clean backup is getting a good restorable copy of a file so if you can do it with the machine powered off so in this case we're going to take pick on Windows 10 here and we'll do clone now that's making a backup copy of the system and it's making a full copy of it and you're just creating another version now why would you want to do this versus a snapshot well it all depends now this will basically if you take the size disk space you're you've got now it's going to copy that because it's going to bring the current state over so if you've got a, a base image, something you like to start with, you're doing several different virtual machines, this is a good way to keep from having to reinstall everything every time and get it to where you want it to be. Now, the flip side is, in terms of Windows licensing, you're going to have to have a new key for each one because it's going to complain when it sees a duplicate license key out there. So this is option one. So let's go ahead and we'll start up Windows 10. It'll take it just a bit to go here and then I can actually take you through the snapshot part of the back and we'll just go past its little warnings where it's telling you the you know that it supports keyboard capture and and that kind of good thing mouse pointer integration which is fine. So at this point with the machine starting up we, we can actually go in and do a take snapshot and we'll go ahead and let the screen come up here not that it's going to make a, a bit of difference but so we go to machine take snapshot and you can either do like you say host t or just select it from the backup and you'll be given an option of giving it a snapshot name and the, depending on why you're doing the snapshot, it would be a good idea to go ahead and get some descriptions in here. Just putting in the date or, or backup and the date number, if there's something you're doing this for a particular reason, like say prior to Microsoft Patch Tuesday, because you want to make sure that you can restore the machine to a pre uh, snapshot situation, this would be a good reason to, to do a snapshot or a clone there there's no one right or wrong way a snapshot will back up the individual machine and there'll be if you're running tight on disk space it will take less overhead so that's that's the two main things and it just there's like there's no one right or wrong way it's a matter of if you're watching your disk space very closely it the clone will basically eat up more disk space faster than a snapshot will now when have i used this well for those of you who followed me for several years, you know, at one point I wrote for Network World and I had the help desk column. Well, I had somebody call one day and was having a problem getting into the Network World website. And it didn't make a whole lot of sense. So what I did is I fired up a virtual machine and I did snapshot backups at different levels as far as I did a snapshot of the base, which is probably a good thing to do. So that way you've got a known good start point to fall back to. And then I would install Opera take a snapshot, 
roll back to the main snapshot, install Chrome, take a snapshot, roll back to the main snapshot, Firefox, all the different browsers. And I actually had to test. I was testing about four different browsers at that point, and then we found the problem. It was a web server issue, and it wasn't rendering correctly for one particular web browser. So could I have handled that better? Well, I could have done a clone, or I really didn't have to worry about doing a snapshot with each distinct browser. My concern was not knowing what interaction there might be that it could introduce a variable, and I was trying to have a clean test bit. So that's how I got into the process of doing snapshots. A clone would, I mean, I would have chewed up a serious amount of disk space, depending on the size uh, disk image that you've got. So that was where snapshots were handy. And again, it comes back to, do you do it with the machine powered up or powered off? If you can at all, do it. If you're going to do a clone, then do it with a powered off. A snapshot pretty much is going to have to, you know, the machine's going to have to be running to get that as a menu option. Let's, let's actually, let's look here. Let's go back to that screen and with that, yeah, you, you can't, the machine's got to be started at that point. So yeah, it's, it's doing a snapshot's not even, uh, an option actually because it's running now we can't do a clone so that settles the argument right there that's something that I had, had never tried before so if we go down down into the image itself because we've got there we go now we'll get into the main image now within the image is where we can take the snapshot so cloning you can only do with it powered off snapshot would be done with the machine powered on, but it, it's too, even then it's still two distinctly uh, different backups. But that's, again, this is just something to, to keep in mind as you, you move forward with the different virtual machines. Now, I'm going to be doing something moving forward with this video and the others. I will tell you that there's, I'm going to have different kinds of checklists to help you with your smart home piece. Now, it, for example, for this video, if you go into the description on the show notes, if you click on the link and go through the process, then you will get a virtual machine creation checklist. Now, this is just the starting. These are the settings that I always make note of when I'm doing it. If you have additional settings you may want to watch, then you can always add that to it. And if several of you are end up adding the same thing, please let me know, and I'll be glad to update the checklist because I want this to be as useful as I can for everybody. Again, it's no charge. It's just something I want to get in your hands. And in return for your email address, I don't rent this. I don't loan it. Nobody but me will ever see it. As I find different special deals on smart home technology or when I release uh, new videos, I'll be reaching out to you and let you know that that's there. So this is just one of the steps I wanted to make sure we covered fairly soon. I've got a Android-based uh, voice over IP phone that I will be showing here within probably the next few days. It really has a lot of potential and can serve as a control point for your smart home. So that's all we were going to cover this time. I was trying to keep the video a little bit short. And after this video has gone up, then you will see links to other videos in the series that I've done. Thank you so much for everyone who's watched. There are affiliate links in this description. So anything you buy that I mention from within the videos, I do get a small commission that doesn't affect your price. So thank you very much for your time and we'll see you again soon.